exciting because, you know, I, I look at momentum and momentum, all it is, is a concentrated effort towards one specific task and goal. A concentrated effort where everyone moves in unison towards one specific task or goal. And uh, guys, we are in full momentum, right? But but I got to be honest with you guys, we're just taking off, right? Like the nose of the plane is just lifting off the runway. Guys, you know, we're about to put 100,000 customers into the business in the next 30 days after this week of training. 100,000 customers into the business in the next 30 days after this training, guys. So I want you guys to understand that there's going to be specific skill sets that you guys are going to have to learn and not only learn, but be able to teach, right? Uh, because you know what I say, guys, it's not about what it is that you can do. It's about what it is that we can teach because what we can teach is duplicatable. Duplication leads to momentum and momentum leads to that residual income that each and every single one of us are looking for, right? Um, so with that being said, guys, today, you guys are going to learn about the skill sets that get you paid the skill sets that get you paid ladies and gentlemen um you know i i, I despise when people say oh you know it's not about the money it, it's okay to say it's so much more than just about the money but to say it's not about the money is a complete and utter lie guys you see money is going to make you more of who it is that you are money's going to give you the ability to do things like give back to your church money's going to give you the ability to do things like give back to your family money's going to be able to give you the ability like live the the, the lifestyle that you deserve that you that you aspire to have right and inside of this industry you don't have to be the best speaker you don't have to be the best closer you don't have to but there are specific skill sets that will get you paid and if you have an organization of individuals that can do this Guys, you are on the money. So with that being said, guys, um, you know, the, the skill sets that you guys are going to learn about today, you guys are going to learn about more, more in depth about how to invite. You're going to learn about edification. You're going to learn about um, uh, following up. You're going to learn how to close. And one of the individuals to teach you guys that is one of the individuals that I've watched and learned do all these things along the way. And now I get to call him a business partner, Mr. Jason Brown, Chairman 500, guys. So, guys, I need you guys to make sure that you're taking notes. We broke over 2,000 people on this call right now. Good stuff. We're on our way to 3,000. Um, but I need you guys to make sure that you're taking notes, right? Don't don't just wait for the replay. Actually take notes throughout the entire process, guys, because it, I, it it's a guaranteed proven fact. You're only going to retain 5% of what it is that you learn if you do not write this thing down. And then above all, guys, make sure that you're implementing what it is that you learn, not tomorrow, not next week, but literally after the call. Whatever call you take right after this call, make sure that you are implementing it. Guys, because to know and not do is to not know at all. So I'm excited for this call. I'm going to step out of the way of greatness, and I'm going to let JB do his damn thing. Jason, are you with us, brother? Yes, sir. I got to turn my fan on in here. It's already, it's already heating up, bro. I got to I gotta, I gotta get the fan pumping. Give it to them, bro. Give it to them, bro. I'm excited about this one. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure if, if, the squad, if the squad's ready. Squad, are you ready? Are you ready for this? If, you, if you're ready, let's get in the chat box. Hit me with some eights. Hit me with some eights, the number of infinity. So, so that's what we're about to do real quick. Matt, we just hit 2,500 people. I'm fired up and excited. Um, you know, guys, boot camp so far has been incredible. I was telling Matt, I was telling Matt yesterday that, you know, going through the, uh, you know, going through the process uh, of training on some of these topics has actually been amazing for me. Uh, shout out to Justin Owens for the for the swag. Pre appreciate you, bro. Um, but uh, you know, going through the process of these trainings has actually been incredible for me because you know, I, you know, I was doing trainings for like two weeks prior. Let me see what who's, who's the, oh, that's my Telegram. My Telegram is blowing up. Let me get rid of that so we're so we're not uh, all right, we can. Going through that process, guys, has been incredible for me because. You know, I've been training for about two to three weeks uh, on the basics, the, and the, the basics and the basics and the basics. And I've been doing different calls with different teams around the world. And I just keep telling them, stick to the basics, stick to the basics, stick to the basics, get back to the basics. And, you know, we started off with the launch and then we went to social media. And when I was doing that social media training, I was actually reminded of old things that I used to do all the time. 
that I like, I was like, man, I need to, I need to, you know, amp that up. I actually came up with another idea on that call. Um, so it was really cool. And I got a lot of great feedback. I appreciate you guys, um, you know, messaging me, reaching out to me on, on social media. Um, I actually went on my Instagram just to show you that this training is applicable. It's, it's effective and it works. And I did a giveaway on my Instagram and the amount of engagement that I got on that post was unbelievable. Over 500 comments, uh, over 3000 likes, uh, 30 plus thousand impressions. And in the first few minutes, in the first few minutes, the post exploded because I got a bunch of comments on it. Right. And then I actually commented on the comments. So, you know, we did the social media training and then yesterday and we did the social media training and we showed also an example of how it could work. I got messages about, you know, people applying what I taught about the birthday. So grateful for the feedback. Uh, it's always good to know that, you know, we come on here and we pour our hearts out to really help you guys grow. And, um, you know, and you go to work on it. I love that as a mentor, that's the most gratifying thing in the world. Uh, and then yesterday, Matt destroyed uh, that training, um, you know, really just the mindset and what it takes to be a chairman. But today, guys, we're going to get into, uh, honestly, I've been looking forward to this day. Social media is such a fun topic for me because, um, you know, I learned a lot and applied it. But I got to tell you that the things we're going to talk about today uh, might possibly be my favorite thing to train on. Um, social media it's, it's fun, but it's a, it's a long, you know, deep process. And it's hard to tell people to sit back and apply something and be patient. It works, but patience is key. These topics today. So I'm going to tell you the topics because I want you to understand the amount of value that you're going to grab and the amount of insight you're going to have on these topics. So if there's some people that need to be on this call that are not on, you guys can get them on before we really turn up the heat. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the invite. The first thing we're going to talk about is the invite, okay? And the process of inviting people to anything, right? Inviting people to events, inviting people to webinars, inviting people to anything, okay? The process of inviting. Then we're going to talk about the, the, pro, the process of following up and the power of following up and the importance of following up. And then we're going to talk about edification, okay? So we're going to go into... Um, the process of edification, the importance of edification, the power of edification in your business. And last, probably my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to train on in the entire world, we're going to go into closing. Okay. So closing is like the most asked question, Matt, you can definitely relate to this. Any leader in, in network marketing, this is the question we get the most. How do I improve my closing, right? How do I become better at close? I mean, we get this all the time. And I think you guys are going to really like the way that I teach uh, and the way that we, the way that we look at it, because uh, closing is just, um, it's not just something you do, right? It's not just the way you talk. It's not just that, but there, it, there's some layers to it. So guys, who's fired up about those topics? I see, I see a hundred people just jumped on. So. I think you guys are excited, but if you're fired up about those topics, give me, give me some motivation in the chat box and we're going to kick this thing. We're going to kick this thing on a different level. Give me some fire emojis and uh, everybody go invite one more person or jump in that group chat real quick. So important people don't miss this call. So guys, let's, let's kick it off and let's talk about one of the most underrated skills in the game, right? One of the most underrated skills in the game. So I'm going to close the chat box. I'm going to keep it closed. So everybody is focused, get the pen and paper out, write this stuff down. This is, this is really, really, really important. If you want to go chairman 10 in the next 30, 60, 90, six months, you know, if you want to go chairman 10, this stuff is going to be key. So look at the importance first and foremost of edification. Okay. Now, when we look at our profession, right, we talk about this word profession. And we look at our profession. One of the most important, if not the most important part of the whole thing is the edification process because people don't know what they don't know. And I always tell people, but 
understand that it's not the company that people join. It's not the compensation plan that people join. It's not just the education that people join, but people join you. People join the person before they join or before they subscribe or before they get started, they're getting started with you. And I can't tell you how many times throughout the year that I've had people message me that I don't know off social media. And I've also had people that I do know that said, look, I'm a little skeptical. Uh, look, I, I don't know much. I, look, I'm not that confident about trading, but I believe in you. You know, I'm confident in you as a mentor, confident in you as a leader. And so obviously, you know, people follow people. Remember this, write this down. This is a good one. People follow people who know where they're going, right? And I'll tell you something. Everybody follows somebody because if we knew everything in life, then life would be perfect. But obviously it's not, right? We look at this current situation that we're in right now in the world. And, you know, look, nobody really knows. Right. We don't know how long it's going to last, how many people are going to be affected. We have an idea, right, a, a broad idea, but nobody really knows. If we knew, then, then we wouldn't be in the situation, right? So what's important right now in this situation is leadership, right? Governmental leadership, influential leadership, uh, scientific leadership, emotional leadership, spiritual leadership, right? I'm watching leaders rise and some leaders are falling, right? Because leadership is built on faith. Understand this. Leadership is built on faith. And when leadership can, now, now let me tell you the truth. Leadership can be built on fear. Can be built on fear. But leadership that's built on fear is temporary leadership. Leadership that's built on faith is constant and consistent leadership, right? And if you look at a river, right? Kind of the same idea that if you look at a river that is continuing to flow, now that water technically doesn't know where it's going, but it stays in a constant stream, right? And it stays in a constant stream. And that's similar to leadership built on faith, right? And if you think about the cleanliness of a river, right? And, and I just think about where would I want to fish, right? If I wanted to have a good, clean meal, well, if I had the choice between fishing in a river, right? Or fishing in a lake, well, I'm probably going to fish in a river, right? We had a, where I grew up in New Jersey, fishing is, is a big thing, right? There's a lot of outdoor, there's a lot of salt water, there's a lot of fresh water. So uh, there was a little pond by my house and me and my friends, we used to ride our bikes over there and, and we would go fishing. And across the street from the pond was a lake, right? And, you know, the lake had um, like pickerel, you're not really, I mean, I don't know if you guys know much about fishing, but um, pickerel are not really very pleasant fish. They're nasty. Um, and typically they live in water where there's snakes, you know, they're, they're just nasty fish, right? So you're not really eating that. Um, but, you know, we did it for, for the fun of fishing and throwing it back and just, you know, trying to, trying to catch something when you're bored, you know? But in that pond, let me tell you something. In that little pond across the street, there was garbage. There was uh, pollution. It was nasty, like green, disgusting water. And it was just turtles, snakes. Like that was really it. And then every once in a while you'd catch a fish. But, you know, we really, we really fished there because like we would always love the thrill of like seeing a snake uh, swim across the water or something. And looking back, we're pretty stupid, right? But would you, let me ask you something. Would you eat out of that pond or out of a river that you can see the bottom, right? You could see the rocks, you could see the fish. And I, I think about like, you know, watching like Nat Geo or, you know, these documentaries and you see, you know, like a grizzly bear come and try to, you know, grab a, a trout out of, the, out of the river, but you could see the bottom, right? You could see the fish swimming. Oh, that's a clean meal compared to, you know, eating out of a pond. Now, some of you guys are like, what in the world is this guy talking about fishing for? Because it's relevant. And sometimes in leadership, you need, analogies. You need things to compare your situation to. And um, I think as a leader, when you can create analogies, it'll help people grab your concept on a different level. And so I want you to understand that leadership out of faith is like fishing in the river, right? It's clean. 
it's still uncertain, right? The destination sometimes is, is uncertain, right? Especially for the traveler, right? And for you as the leader, sometimes the destination is uncertain. But when you lead by faith, see only God or only your creator or only the universe or whatever you believe in, that's really the only thing that knows your destination. But we move leadership on faith. Now, when leadership is built on fear, it's like building in that pond. It's very stagnant. It's very temporary. Um, And the only things that can survive in that environment are what we would consider nasty, right? What we would consider like reptilian, right? What we would consider, you know, if you want to swim in garbage, then, you know, law of association, right? So, you know, I talk about this to set the foundation for the call today. Because our perspective on leadership is extremely important. And, you know, you need a lot of faith to build this business. You need faith in who you follow. But people follow people who know where they're going. Uh, People follow people with confidence. People follow people who sometimes just appear that they know where they're going. And I I think back to, you know, when Matt and I were uh, just a few years back, we were, um, you know, seasoned in the leadership space, three years, three and a half years or so. And, um, you know, we never, we didn't have a huge result. It wasn't like we were, you know, sitting here just printing money. We weren't, you know, we didn't have huge organizations. We had never built massive organizations around the world, but you know, the way that we led was people over profits, right? It was faith over fear. It was, you know, work over, you know, talk. It was, um, you know, uh, emotional intelligence over, emotions and and all those things allowed people to edify us in a way that created the credibility that then created the result. And I want you to understand that edification has nothing to do with the rank. It has nothing to do with a result sometimes, but I think the best edification that you can do is just good, genuine edification. And let me tell you something. A lot of people think that edification is just a one-way street, that you just edify, you know, Jason Brown, Matthew Rosa. You just edify Bryce Thompson. You know, you just edify Alex Morton. You just edify David Imonitia, Gary McSweeney, Von Tapia. You know, you just edify the, the elites. Edification is a, is, a, is a four-way crossing street because I learned that the edification going one way is good, but the edification going always is great. And I don't know if you guys want a good result or a great result, but I want a great result. And so I edify my cross lines, right? My friends who are not in our organization, but at the end of the day, I understand that we're all a part of the same organization. So, you know, Randy and Wanda Webb, I love them to death. They're amazing people. I tell them all the time, you guys are world. I I appreciate you because they're, they're world-class, right? They pay attention to detail. They ask questions, they work, they don't complain, right? But they're, but they're good leaders and they're bold, right? Jewel, China, Lawrence, right? They're not in our organization. Julian Kushner, Johnny Lopez, uh, the German team, um, Herman, right? They're not in our quote, quote, organization, Nick Gomez, Lagaretta, Scotty, right? But you wouldn't know because we treat them like family, right? We, we work together. We, they're on the webinar right now. And that is what we call side to side edification, right? The ability to say, well, look, you know, uh, maybe a lot of people in my group love Justin Owens, right? I love Justin Owens. Now, grateful, but one way or the other, whether Justin was technically in our organization or not, I, I, Justin's a great leader, great speaker, motivational guy, got, gave me the hoodie, love him even more, right? But I have groups that are cross-lined to Justin. And last week they messaged me and they're like, dude, Justin's a beast. See, when you build the business on faith, you have no issue edifying other people. And when you edify other people, it shows people the abundance of talent around you. So. You may be a P600, but your upline is a P2000, which means they have other leaders. You may be a P150, but your upline is a P1000, P2, P5, which means they have other leaders that are technically not in your group, but they're in your group because we're all in the same company, right? We have to have that mentality. And so when we can edify 
and build our business in faith. I'm not worried about my teams. I'm not worried about my leaders jumping or, or switching teams or, you know, being upset. I'm not worried about, you know, somebody else being a, you know, better leader, better speaker, because everybody has different talents. Look, there's some leaders in my group who love the way David coaches and mentors more than they like the way that I do it. And I'm proud of that. I'm not ever building a business in fear because when you build a business in fear, you're going to attract destruction. This is a very mature and real conversation that we're having right now, because I think a lot of people look at edification and they're like, yo, I'm going to edify my chairman. My chairman's the best. My culture's the best. My team is the best. And everybody else, pff, yo, my, my educator, the best. My package, my add-on, my gold cup, my steady, my this, my that. When in reality, that mindset is going to get you a very small result, but it's the abundant edification, not just the edification that goes up, but honestly, the other directions are more important than the edif edification going up. The, the opportunity to edify the platform and not, you know, I hate when people go out and they become this, you know, I've been in the company for three months. I got a great strategy. I'm the guru. Uh, now all these people, right? We call them overnight gurus. You've been trading for three months. You made 500 bucks. You, you did 100% return on your account. And now you're the new Chris Terry, right? And look, we got people that just think they are the best thing since sliced bread. And you know what? To be honest, those people, they edify themselves. Self-edification is disgusting. Self-edification is pathetic. Self-edification is ego. And self-edification creates a godlike complex. And there's only one God. There's only one source. Whatever you believe in, this isn't a religious conversation, but we all believe in something. And believing in yourself is the key to destruction. Believing in yourself, edifying yourself, making yourself self-glorification. Name one person in history who is self-glorified and fulfilled. Name one person in history who is a self-proclaimed king, but had everything. Doesn't happen. You edify everybody else. Let people edify you. But the minute you start, I'm the best. Matt and I have had Chairman 25s in our team self-glorify. And they're not even in the company. They're making no money in network marketing anymore. You could go from Chairman 25 to Chairman Zero quick. Back to P150 quick. Because when the show is about you and the edification is about you, everybody else becomes a number. And just the statistic and keeping people over profits is the key to keeping what you, what you build, because it has to be about everybody else. Not about, you. not about, you. I don't care to be on top 10. I don't care to be on a website. I don't even care if I ever speak at another event. It doesn't matter to me because I've fallen in love and Matt talked about this. He, we fall in love, if we fall in love with the other people, the whys, their desires, their passions, we really understand, you know, our leaders' lives, the people's lives and what moves them, then you'll never have to worry about self-edification because people will see your heart. And when they know your heart, you're being edified right then and there. So work on that. Speak more edification into your leadership, into your team. But never forget to edify up. And I'm going to tell you, I edify Christopher Terry. I don't talk about the money he's made. You know, I've heard people say, Chris Terry's this. He's made this much money. He's made that much money. But guess what? Somebody else's money is not your money. The, the money that I've made, the money that Matt's made, it's not paying that newest person's bill. So it's not really that relevant. It's not. Now look, it's good to see clues that people are winning, right? Nobody wants to join something that is not, that hasn't worked, but my result is never going to be your result. That's why we don't flash our results on social media. That's why we don't post our material possessions. That's why we don't post our money on social media, because those accomplishments are not the newest person's accomplishments. But what's important is magnifying somebody's heart. What's important is magnifying somebody's intentions. 
I was speaking to a big leader that's getting ready to launch this morning. And I told her, I said, this is the reason why I love this company. And this is the reason why I put my heart and soul on the line every day for this company. Because Christopher Terry and Isis De La Torre are not perfect. And they admit it. They're coachable. And they don't find motivation through money. Right? Everybody's in business to, to be in a profit. Right? The trading business, when you become a customer, you want to become a profitable trader. When you open a business as an IBO, you want to become a profitable IBO. When you open a traditional business, you want to become profitable. But I'll tell you, Chris Terry, Isis De La Torre, they had wealth before the company. They don't take paychecks or salaries from the company. Do you understand how amazing it feels to be a part of a company, how refreshing it feels to be a part of a company where the CEO is a world-class trader and you can edify his heart and who he is and people can see it through the vibration of our logo, of our brand, of our, of our message, that the fact that we offer education and we're not taking investments, we're not taking money from people, we're not, we're not doing all that scammy stuff that companies do to make a quick buck. We've really positioned ourselves to be a game changer. And you know what? Some people want get rich quick, but they, but they won't stay. And that's fine. That's the law of filtration, my friends. We call it the law of filtration, that everything in the universe will end up exactly where it's supposed to be. That when the water runs through a filter, the water will end up with the water and the stuff that's not supposed to be in the water will end up with the stuff that's not supposed to be in the water because it's in the filter. That's the law of filtration. So when the, I, I just believe, I don't care when people quit. I don't get upset when people leave my team. I don't get upset when leaders leave the company. I don't get upset and I'm going to tell you why. Because it's the law of the filter. The right people will get through the process. The right people will join your business. The right people will stay in your business. And the filter, the law of the filter will take out everything that is not supposed to be. Everything in your life that's not supposed to be there, the law of the filter will work in your favor. So edification is the art of understanding somebody's intentions. It's the art of understanding somebody's work ethic. It's the art of understanding the, the confidence that a person has. And if we do a better job with people checking out our company, if we do a better job at edifying the culture, edifying the vision, edifying the intention, you'll never have to talk about a compensation plan. You'll never have to talk about how much money somebody's going to make trading. You won't have to do it. I've done events around the world. And, you know, some of the leaders are like, well, what do you want to, how do you want to structure this event? And I'm like, honestly, if I'm closing, I'm not going to do the compensation plan. Sometimes they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm going to, if you trust me, if you want to do it your way, I'll do it your way. I'm cool with that. Not offended at all. But if you guys trust me, I want to show you something that I believe is more effective. And I do the, I do the whole thing. And I just edify affiliate marketing. I show people the real examples that big companies have done better in the last 10 years through word of mouth than they have through traditional marketing and advertising. I just explain to them why people should trust people with their decisions. And, and then I say, look, the company gives you an option. If you want to use the referral link, you can get the services for free. Now, what type of company does that? See, I'm edifying the company. I'm not edifying a chairman 500. I'm not edifying the chairman 10. Now I do, but the most important thing you can edify is the truth. And the truth is that we are part of a company that gives before it takes. And I love that. And then I just say, look, and if you see the vision to go beyond two referrals, you know, a lot of people who are in a financial struggle, you know, a lot of people who are seeking education, you know, a lot of people who want to build more skill sets Then the company put together a blueprint. I don't say compensation plan. That sounds like a, a game. It sounds like a, a sales thing. So company put together a blueprint and that blueprint will allow you to build an organization of customers. So more than two. And if you hit certain benchmarks, the company will pay you a weekly residual income. And that's it. 
And, you know, maybe sometimes I'll plant the seed that, you know, if they, if they bring 12 customers, $600 a month, but I'm not out there, you know, making myself glorified. I'm edifying everything around me and it seems to be effective. So my encouragement as we open up this training, because we're really just getting started, we have over 33, now 3,350 people on this call. It's crazy. I think we can continue to send out invites because this is game changing stuff. I think the better we get at edifying the, the, the truth, the better we get at telling the story naturally. Because when you have to lie, now check this out. When you have to lie about your trading results, when you're showing a demo account to show people that it's working and you don't tell them it's a demo account, when you lie about your rank, when you lie about your income, when you lie about your results, people pick up that vibration. Now they might believe it. They might not identify that vibration right away, right? There's always a vibration when you do something, a vibration that is false, right? A vibration that you're putting out, like, you know, uh, you're just lying to people. Eventually that will come to the light. We've had people that have lied about their income, lied about their trading results, lied, 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 and they're not here anymore. So I always tell people to edify the things around you and be honest with what you say to elevate the opportunity. So let's move on now to inviting because, you know, once you understand the spiritual, you know, side of, you know, how to really build this business. And I just want you guys to have confidence in taking the long road. You know, Matt and I laugh all the time because, you know, we, we, we have taken, we've taken the long road. Um, temptation is a part of everything. Temptation is a part of the business. Temptation is a part of trading. Temptation is a part of, you know, your, your relationships, traveling the world. Guys, there's temptation in everything we do. Um, in fact, the first two human beings dealt with temptation right away. So we've been dealing with temptation for a long time. But I want you guys to understand that when you take the long road, it does take a little bit longer to get to the result that you want. But we want to teach you the professional and the responsible way to build this business. Because results that last, that's sexy. Temporary results are forgotten about. And you never see a statue for a temporary result. You see a statue for a legacy. And that's the real, that's the real secret here. It's to take the long road. Don't try to take shortcuts. And a big part of what we do in our business as builders, right? If you want to build a group, if you want to build a team, a big part of that process is the invite. Right now, I remember. Let me take a, a sip of water here. Let me know if you guys love. Let me know what you guys think. Let me get some feedback. I'm going to open up the chat box real quick. Let me get some feedback about part one of this training. If you guys are getting some value so far, let me let me tell. Let me let me. Woo! How many people? Be honest with me. How many people feel the weight of the world lifted off their shoulders, knowing the right way to edify? Just give me, give me, um, give me some yeses. Just yes, yes in the chat box. If you feel like that, the first thirty minutes of this call like lifted the weight of the world off of your shoulders. Because for me, even just talking about it again, the weight of the world comes off. And when I understood that we could build a business honestly, and that it, you would get a better result, whew, refrigerator off the back, you don't feel like you're even taking anything from anybody anymore. You don't feel like you're forcing people to join anymore. You don't feel like you're hunting people down to join anymore. You just attract your results and you elevate to new levels. Yes, 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 yes. But this, this, this thing right here is the law of the filter. This law of the filter is, is just perfect on this webinar right now. I'm fired up. You guys got me motivated, okay? So let's continue. So let's move on now to the invite because the invite is obviously the key, right? I always tell people, people are like, what's the secret? And I'm like, yo, there is no secret, unfortunately. Now, there's a lot of skills. There are no secrets. And um, in our business, guys, plain and simple, we get paid for the referrals that we make. 
And we make those referrals based upon the eyeballs that see our opportunity. So if no eyeballs are seeing your opportunity, then you can't grow, right? You could have the best recipe in the world, but if that recipe is on one piece of paper and it goes into the shredder, does that recipe really exist anymore, right? You could be the greatest, most passionate customer we've ever had, the greatest, most passionate leader we've ever had. But if you don't get eyeballs to see that same thing that has you motivated and excited, do you really have the greatest opportunity in the world? And the answer is no. It's like, you know, people say, if a tree falls in the woods, did it, did it make a noise? And you're like, damn, that's, that's deep. That's deep, you know? This is deep. And our job is to get better at getting eyeballs to the information. Now, there's a lot of ways to do it. And, you know, I think what's most important is understanding people first, right? To understand how to invite, you must understand people, right? And I'm not saying you can't invite. I'm going to teach you how to do it properly. But I'm telling you, getting in and understanding the art of people is so important. I'm going to give you guys, if I can, I'm going to give you guys a couple I'm going to give you, give you guys a couple recommendations. Uh, some of these overlap. So I'm just going to type in the chat. Um, so everybody, um, everybody should get this message. But I'm going to give you guys a couple books that I would recommend you get your hands on that will help you understand how to open conversations, how to make more friends, how to network, and how to understand people. Uh, because obviously that's key, right? You, there's a million people online. We talked about it in the social media training the other day. If you did not see the social media training, if you did not see day one of bootcamp, day two of bootcamp, day three of bootcamp, they're on my YouTube channel. There's tons of videos that Matt and I have done, tons of trainings that Matt and I have done on my YouTube channel. Go subscribe so you get the notifications when I post the videos and use that as your database. But day two bootcamp, we talked about social media. We talked about getting better at talking to people. And then you need to know, just know where the people are. But one of the books that I recommended and shout out a bunch of my, bunch of my leaders actually tagged me that they went out and bought this book upon my recommendation. Um, so Dale Carnegie, we love you. We thank you um, so much for, <coughs> for the value that this is how to win friends and influence people in the digital age. Um, the original How to Win Friends and Influence People, probably my favorite book. If not, definitely top two, top three. Um, but when it comes to this business, this, this book, if you get the digital age version, it's great because it's uh, more up to date. But I honestly would recommend you read both um, because, you know, the original How to Win Friends and Influence People was, was written during like the industrial age and, and you know, just... Dale goes around and, and just applies so much important stuff that connects to just how to win friends and influence people. I don't know, just how to be a good person and how to attract good people in your life and how to build proper, good, healthy relationships and ultimately just make yourself a better leader. So this is the digital version, talks about more of the up-to-date stuff with uh, technology and social media. Um, and then a really good book that was actually written by two good friends of mine. Well, it was really written by Cherry, uh, Cherry Tree and Esther. Um, they're incredible. And, you know, we talk a lot about, um, I'm going to show this book. So it's called the bank bank code, um, but why they buy. And I love this book and I recommend this book. It's, it's deep, but it's powerful. It's a fun read. Um, but she, Cherry has spent her entire life. She's dedicated her life to understanding the different personalities of people and what makes them tick, what makes them think, what makes them passionate, and ultimately, um, what would make them buy or say yes to an opportunity. And um, they actually work with governments. They've worked with the United Nations to help solve, you know, wars and and to help create world peace. Um, they work with schools. Um, this is this is game changing stuff. This is really powerful. Why they buy. Um, I don't know if they have a private website or if you can get it on Amazon. She actually gave me this book, which I'm super grateful for. I was like, dude, this is like the best gift. Um, so I'm not too sure where you guys can get it at. Probably the bank, bank 
code.com would be a good, oh, why they buy.com. That's easy enough. Why they buy.com. There you go. Okay. So this is a great book because to understand exactly on a big level, how to invite, how to lead, how to, how to prospect, um, understanding people and understanding that there's different types of people, right? You have, you know, we've all heard the red, yellow, green, blue, you know, different types of personalities. Some people are very aggressive. Some people are very conservative. So, you know, somebody who's a red, like a Matt Rosa is like, is a red first, right? So he runs really well with people that are action takers, that people that move now, people that, you know, want to change their life in this moment. Um, and people that are red don't always in the beginning, especially, um, not relate to the, it's just a relatability thing. They don't relate to somebody who's more calculated, like a blue, right? Uh, we have a leader in our business who is extremely blue and, and everything is just mapped out, coordinated, coordinated. They're a blueprint, right? Like every detail is understood before they go. Now they can both produce reds and blues can both produce, but they do it like run first and run last, right? So you think of the military, like first responders and final responders, tactical responders. So, you know, understanding that because some people are red and they only know red and they'll, they'll push away our uh, yellows, greens, and blues. And it's, you know, this skill is so important because if you're only inviting a certain way, I can teach you the invite, but you're still going to only have a 25 to 30% success ratio. So I don't like to just give skills. I like to give the psychology behind the skill so you can master the skill, if that makes sense. My job is to, to help you guys master these skills, not just understand them. Because if you can master the skill, you can become a chairman. And to become a chairman, you must teach right? You must teach the skills. So if you understand it, you can't teach it. If you master it, you can teach it. So, so understanding the psychology of the back end will help you become a great inviter and then help you teach people how to become a great, great inviter. So when you invite, no matter who you're inviting, being able to identify that person's personality is important because some people will respond well to a webinar like I'm more of a at home type of guy. I am red to some, I have red. Like I, I loved action. I love work. I'm not scared of it, but I'm calculated. So I'm like, I'm really a combination of all of them. Like I'm, I'm empathetic, right? So some of it is emotional um, to some extent, right? Some of it is, is calculated. Some of it is action. Um, so I'm a little diverse, I guess you would say, but I have a ability to relate with everybody, uh, which is great. It's amazing. And then sometimes it hurts because you you work with everybody, right? So your plate is more full. But for you guys to understand where you are is important. But then to understand where other people are, even if you don't master it, you can hear it through their language. You can see it on their pages, on social media. You can see it by observation. Sometimes you're going to be wrong, but most of the time you're going to be right. So understanding that will help you invite you know, some people are going to want a webinar first. Some people are going to want a one-on-one -on -one first. Some people are going to want a face-to-face. -face. Some people are going to want multiple follow-ups. Some people you're going to talk to the first time and they're going to go right away, right? So not, you, not getting frustrated is really the key because when I, sometimes I get frustrated because some people move slower than others. Right. And sometimes I get frustrated because some people just want to run, 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 run. And I'm like, well, wait, you're trying to run super fast, but you're missing all this important stuff. Right. So just guys, understanding that will allow you to invite at a very high level because you'll know and you'll be able to ask that person, well, hey, you know, look, um, there's something that I want to show you. Right. There's an opportunity. That, that right now I believe is now more pivotal to, to get involved in than ever, right? There's a, a skill set that I believe everybody should be using and, and learning. And I would love to show it to you. Um, but what would you like better, you know? And, and maybe just finding that out or, or just observing it and, and you know, kind of offering two options. Look, would you rather jump on a webinar so you could see a presentation? Or would you rather jump on a three-way, you know, Zoom call with, you know, my, my mentor who's crushing it 
and we just do it more private because some people are going to want more of a private, you know, two on one where you actually walk them through everything. And some people are like, nah, let me check out the webinar first and then we'll go to that. Right. So don't get frustrated, guys, because like we talked about the other day, this is about shifting the strategy. And if you know what people react to and you kind of understand and can listen to what they're saying, then you're going to be a great inviter and you're going to have a much better rate of getting eyeballs to the presentation. So the key is being organized in this whole thing. Organized and consistent are important because if you're not writing your list down, if you're not documenting these things, you're just going to invite people. And this is going to segue us into the next piece, which is the follow-up. But if you're not organized, you're going to conversate with people one time and you're going to forget about people. And I got to tell you, my first couple of years, one of the reasons why I didn't have a crazy result is because I was not doing what I'm teaching you guys right now. I learned that lesson the hard way because I found a notebook. Then I found another notebook. and. I was good at making the list. I was good at writing down my prospects. I was good at writing down the people where they were. And I never, I was, wasn't great at following up. And that's really where I probably dropped the ball. And so I would tell people that we'll go into the follow-up and that's important. But if you're not going to follow up with people, um, the results are going to be hard to get because some people will take action right away, but 80% of people will not. 80% of people are not going to say yes right away. Um, I'd say 70% of people will say yes within two or three exposures. And then you'll have, you know, you'll have like 10% that'll probably never say yes. They'll just keep you in this holding pattern and ask you a trillion, billion, gajillion questions, but never really get started. So we deal with all that, right? We relate. So we're all the same. I know what you guys are thinking right now. You're like, damn, Jay's going through the same thing. We all been through it, guys. It's, it's human nature. It's not I am Academy problem. It's a human nature understanding. That's why it goes so deep into the psychology of understanding people, because then you'll get the best result possible. So the invite, here's some of the things that are important. Number one, for the first exposure, you always want to be in a hurry and you want to connect and then disconnect. Now, let me explain. See. I have um, some people that live in my building who are asking me. Um, I have, you know, people that I meet online. Uh, I've got, you know, people that I meet as a, like a great waiter. You know, people that I meet in, in while I'm traveling uh, online at an airport. Um, you know, <coughs> people that I meet out. <clears throat> and what I do is I'm never giving somebody the presentation right away. <clears throat> you want people to value your time as well, right? You want... You want people to respect your time, just like you're going to respect their time. So, you know, I'm always in a, first off, I'm always connecting to disconnect, right? And what I mean by that is very simple. I'm not meaning like connect with people and then cut them off. No, what I mean is I've built my social media to be a business card. Essentially, I want my social media to do the talking, not me, because I think self edification is, again, it's just, it's, it's weird. Um, but I want my Instagram to show them my consistency, show them my passion, show them my drive, right? So I let my Instagram and Facebook do the prospecting. But what I do is I just say, hey, look, like I was on a cruise ship a couple of years ago, met a bunch of kids. They had a full court basketball. So I met like 15 guys around my age and we would just go play basketball for an hour a day. It's super hot on a cruise ship. So you can't be playing basketball too long. But we were out and um, by like day three, we had all shared our Instagrams. And, um, you know, a month later, one of them hit me up to join. Uh, two months later, one of them hit me up asking questions. So, you know, it's really funny because I never prospected them. But my social media, <coughs> I did the, the connection on social media, but I never gave them a presentation. So when I say connect to disconnect, that's what I mean, right? You're never going to give them the whole thing right away <clears throat> because you want them to respect your time. Um, but <clears throat> when we talk about the invite, we want to be in a hurry when we're inviting because we want them to pay attention to the visual presentation. And usually the invite is verbal, right? So usually with the invite, sponsored by Bang Energy. So usually we do 
the invite <clears throat> to get them to see something, right? We, for our platform, it's so powerful because we show them the I am center, right? We show them the different uh, components, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> like somewhere here, the components of the I am center, right? The academies, go live, pip talk, the strategies, right? When I show somebody that, they're like, oh, dude, this is crazy. I'm in, right? Like, I I really think that I, don't, I haven't used the company PowerPoint. Now, I'm not de-edifying it. You can use it for big presentations. You can use it for, you know, meetings with a professional environment, stuff like that, because it is important to set the right precedent. But let me tell you guys something. When I'm doing a one-on-one, a two-on-one, a home meeting, well, we're not doing home meetings anymore. Um, but when I'm, you know, even on a webinar with a group of people, I'm not just showing them the PowerPoint. Honestly, most of the time I don't. Um, I get into the I am center and I show them, hey, look, when you become a customer, this is your back office portal. And the company invested a lot of time and money to build this out, to make it systematic and to have everything at your fingertips. And I literally, I'm, I love this. I'm so excited about it. So let me show you, you know, first you have the academy section. And before you get started, you have the academy resources with all these different PDFs and handbooks. So I literally click it and I show them all the resources that they're going to have, the user manuals, so to speak. So they feel confident knowing that even if I don't deliver as a mentor, the platform is going to give them the value they're seeking. Okay. Now, then I walk them, I, I walk them right in to the FRX Academy. And I say, look, when you go, you subscribe, and then you just start working your way through the 100 series. Now, look at how cool this is. You go to the 200 series, the 300 series. The so when you're doing your presentations, you want to invite people to show them those things, not to give them the verbal presentation over the phone. And that's why you got to be in a hurry. You got to let people know, hey, look, you know, I, I first off, you're in a hurry. You let them know, hey, what's up, Mike? I'm glad, glad I got a hold of you. <clears throat> Look, I'm in a rush because uh, I'm running out the door. I got some stuff to do, but it was now here's the second part. It was so important that I that I reached out to you over the phone because I want you to hear my excitement and not just think that this is, you know, some random thing. But I respect you on a massive level. And you already know that. Right. And give them a compliment. Right. So part of the invite process is, hey, look, I'm in a rush, but it was important that I called you because I don't want you to feel like a number. And maybe you don't say that, right? That's a little bit like kind of weird. Like, you know, when you call your friend, you're like, hey, bro, you're not a number. But, you know, so you're not saying that, but you're saying it, right? You want them to know that, that this is a genuine delivery, right? You want them to know that they're not a number. And you really want to show them something that is, that is impacting your life. And so, you know, you're in a hurry, you're moving, you're, you're, you're contacting a bunch of people um, to invite them to this. Um, but the compliment is important because people don't really pay attention till they know that you care. So people don't care what you know. They don't care what you have until they know that you care about them. And so I'm always giving a genuine compliment because there's a reason why you're reaching out to that person. It's somebody you respect. And why do you respect them? It's somebody that you know. It's somebody that you see potential in. You know, maybe you tell them, look, You've always been one of the smartest people that I know. You pick up things so fast. You know, look, you've always been a superstar athlete. Like everything you do, you crush it. And <clears throat> I know right now, because of the situation that we're in, everybody's looking for ways to diversify, right? Everybody's looking for ways to, you know, create and generate some type of income come without leaving their home, right? And I know we're home. And so I found something that is working and I'm excited about. So I wanted to call you. And my question is, are you free tonight at 8 p.m.? Right? You want to clear their schedule. You can even clear their schedule before the, the, the edification, right? Before the compliment. And just say, look, I'm running out the door, but are you free tonight at 8 p.m.? And they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm free. Or maybe they're like, um, maybe it might be around dinner time. I'm not sure. Why? What's up? You say, look, you know, I know with everything that's going on right now, a lot of people are you know, feeling the impact. And um, I thought of you, um, not because, you know, I, I'm assuming you're feeling the impact, but because you are somebody that I really admire and a lot of people look up to, or you're somebody that just has an incredible work ethic 
uh, maybe it's a coworker that you worked with before or a family member, and you say, look, I think a lot of people are, are excited about this platform, this educational platform that I found, because you can do it from home and the value is really there and it's affordable. And I would love to show you tonight at 8 p.m. what the platform is so then you can make a decision if it's something you want to start working on or maybe your wife starts picking up while you're busy. You know, guys, just keep it real. Like I'm not, I'm like designing that invite as I'm going. I'm not, some people are looking for scripts. Some people are looking for, you know, a, a recording. Some people are looking for, you know, but just, just be real with people, right? And just, just keep it genuine. And the invite process will always be effective because, you know, you're letting people know, hey, look, I'm not just calling everybody in my phone book, right? I'm not just spam calling people. I genuinely thought of you. And there's something tonight that is, that, is, that I believe is, is growing around the world crazy. It's the fastest growing education platform in the world. And it's all online and there couldn't be a better time. So the invite, guys, is a genuine thing that you put out. Matt Rosa has has a a video on YouTube. If you search Matt Rosa, (coughs) excuse me, if you search Matthew Rosa, the perfect invite, okay, you guys will find Matthew Rosa, the perfect invite. You guys will find a very quick video that Matt did years ago. And uh, that video is incredible. So um, let's move forward because um, we've been on here for uh, for quite some time, and I want to I want to get get on to the two other things. So let's go to the follow up. This is very simple. This is going to be a short one. The follow up is very simple, guys. The fortune is in the follow up, right? I already touched on this quite a bit, but if you're organized and you are writing down your names on your list, write down the date that you talked to that person, and just write down maybe a few notes about feedback they had. Maybe, you know, uh, 317 uh, watching video, uh, interested, 7 out of 10, right? Um, you know, uh, busy, busy now, uh, contact again in two weeks, right? Just, just you have a note. So when you go back and you remember, wow, you know what? I talked to them two weeks ago. I got it. Now, let me give you my advice for following up because, you know, you don't ever, 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 ever want to get to the point where you are annoying people. Okay. Now I think that a lot of times we are, we get so excited about people getting involved. We get so excited because, you know, somebody uh, may show interest and that excitement actually ends up scaring people away because you got to act like you've been there before. But you got, I listen, I know some people are still out there searching for that first sign up or you're one away from a rank or you're, you know, one away from two and three and it's Monday and you're really trying to make it. But <coughs> when people, sorry guys, when people feel like the hunted, they will run. And when people feel like you're just genuinely offering them something and it's there for the taking, if they want it. And you're just going to keep giving them value as they take it. You give them their space. Guys, you can follow up professionally, but you got to be organized. And I've been doing this. I've been teaching what I'm about to teach you for six years, six years. I learned it and I started teaching my teams in 2014. And it still is one of the most effective strategies. Double the follow-up. So if you talk to somebody for the first time today, right? One plus one is two. So you wait roughly 24 to 48 hours and then you follow up with them again. Very simple. If they make a commitment to watch a video, it's always better to get a time and a day. It's always better to book a meeting from a meeting, right? It's always better to leave a call. Pick this up. This is huge, huge. It's always best. Actually, I would almost make this mandatory that you never leave a three-way call. You never leave a Zoom call. You never leave a coffee meeting. You never leave an appointment without booking another meeting, without booking the next meeting, without saying, look, guys, great call. Super excited. Look, great meeting you. Uh, you know, uh, Thank you for your time. 
When do you want to meet again? When do you want to talk again? When do you want to follow up? Tomorrow, right? Give them two or three recommendations. Tomorrow I'm available at three. Be the, be the aggressor. Don't be the aggressive, but be the first one to lead. Okay. And say, look, when would you like to meet up? Tomorrow I got, let me check my schedule. Some of you guys got way too much time on your hands. Okay. So you could be like, well, tomorrow I could do three. I could do six. I could do nine. But in reality, you could do it all. You could do it all. That's fine. But if you get in this mode of filling up your schedule, eventually your schedule is going to make you feel good. I open up my schedule. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. No, we're working this week or we work this week. But always book appointments. Don't just wing it. Because when you wing it, it shows them that you're still winging it, right? But when you book appointments like a professional and you follow up like a professional, it looks like you're genuinely a professional. It looks like you're genuinely building this business for the right reasons. And sometimes you don't realize that you're accidentally pushing people away because you're taking their call whenever you're, you're calling them randomly, you're texting them randomly with no design. You're texting them every day. Hey, you ready now? Hey, you ready yet? Hey, did you get that money yet? Hey, did you get that prepaid card yet? Hey, did you get your Bitcoin yet? Hey, 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 hey. You want to jump on this webinar today? Hey, I got three webinars today. Don't be annoying. Okay. The world hates annoying. That's why we go on YouTube and we skip the advertisements, right? We just skip. We're like, Dude, we don't care about the cars in your garage. Just skip, 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 right? We don't want to be sold either to people. And they definitely don't want to be sold by their friends, right? They definitely want, that's why people get a weird feeling about our profession because their friends all of a sudden start pushing them, pushing them, pushing them. Guys, for a $25 commission, don't ruin your friendships. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen in the chat box? Should we not be ruining any friendships for a $25 fast start commission, please? Should we, should we not be burning any bridges over a $25 fast start? Can I get it? We don't need that. We want residual income and we want to change people's lives. You can keep my 25. I'm cool with that. Okay. It's a reward, but it shouldn't be the intention. Right? It's a reward, but it shouldn't be the intention. So <clears throat> thank you guys. I love the, love the participation. So <laughs> the fortune is in the follow-up. Get organized. Get your results. Write down your meetings and double it, right? So one plus one is two, right? Then you got two plus two is four, right? Then you got four plus four is eight, or you can even start doing four times four, right? You can even start multiplying it. So you divide the time in between your follow -up. So if I talk to Matt today, right, and, and Matt's a prospect, then technically I could talk to Matt tomorrow or the next day and good. Now, if Matt's not ready to make that decision, then I follow up next in four days. After that, I follow up in eight days. After that, I'll follow up in 16 days. After that, I'll follow up in 32 days. So not 32 days from the jump, 32 days from that day. So I'm talking, we talk today. We follow up tomorrow, the next follow-up that I pursue, see if they pursue it faster, that's different. But if you pursue it, that next follow-up is four days. Then if, watch, this is so powerful, guys. Then it's eight days from that follow-up. Then it's 16 days from that follow-up. So if you think about it, you got one, five days. So one plus four is five, okay? Then you got... Um, five plus eight is 13. Then you've got 13 plus 16 is 29. So you can follow up with somebody four times, basically four or five times in the first month. And then, you know, then it's a 32 days, right? So then you're a month away. Then you're like two months away. Then you're like, then after that, you can give it more space, right? Cause if you followed up with somebody five to seven times in the first two, three months, and they're still interested. They haven't told you, lose my number, block me, I'm done. You know, they're still like on the fence about it. Then you can go, you know, three months, four months at a time. That's different. But I love the structure that this gives you to understand that, you know, if you put spaces in between your follow-ups, people are never going to feel like you're just hunting them. But it's that constant reminder that I think of Justin Adams. You guys know Justin Adams. He's one of the educators for the company. 
Justin Adams was my original sponsor in network marketing. September 4th, 2013, I got started. But he started prospecting me five months before that. And he was never annoying. But his follow-ups were genuine. They were spaced out. They were real. And they were not pushy. It was like, hey, bro, no pressure. Just wanted to let you know. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to give some information tonight. Uh, I have a couple people coming over uh, to check out what we do. Hey, bro, no pressure. But one of my mentors is coming into town. Would love for you to meet him. Let me know if you're free on Friday. You know, I, I always give Justin the credit because he set the right tone for me to say yes. I was ignorant at that time. I had a six-figure position working a nightclub. I was not down until I realized that he was genuinely trying to show me something. But it took time for me to lower my ego, lower my guard, lower my pride. And eventually I came in and I switched, I flipped his business fast. So people that will make the biggest impact in your business sometimes will take five to seven exposures, right? Sometimes those people who make decisions super fast, they don't do all the calculation. So they just start running, but they never scoped out the track. But sometimes people are just genuinely waiting for an opportunity where they have the right time, right? Sometimes people genuinely don't have extra time to give. So we can't get offended when we invite people and they don't show up. We can't, offend when, we can't get offended when people tell us they're going to get started and they postpone. We can't get offended when people say, yes, I'm down and they disappear. We can't because we don't know where people are at. All we can do is get better at the invite process, better at the edification process, better at following up. If we get better at those skills, then our results will get better. But understand, guys, if you want results, it's not going to happen overnight. You need really, let me tell you something. To get to be a professional, you need 10,000 hours. If you want professional results, understand Bryce Thompson is the outlier of outliers. The outlier of outliers. Bryce is a amazing role model. But understand that Bryce's results, Chairman 250, first two years in network marketing, that's crazy. Is it possible? Yes, because he did it. Right, it's like Roger Bannister with the four minute mile. He did it. Can it be done again? Yes. But is it going to happen like that for everybody? No. You have to understand that to be a professional, it takes 10,000 hours. So when you put in your 10,000 hours, you'll know it because it's crazy. But I put in what I, I sat down one day and I really calculated. And I was like, damn, I, that's crazy. But I knew my work ethic. I took a low ball average of what I thought, hours per day, days that I was involved. And it's crazy because around the 10,000 hour mark on my estimation is when I really started to get the results that I was looking for. So embrace the process, love the process, trust the process, enjoy the process. Because you can hit chairman before 10,000 hours. You can hit P2, before you become a professional. But Eric Worre said it. Three years, three to five years in all in network marketing, coachable, teachable, grinding, consistent, three to five years, anything's possible. I'm going to under promise and over deliver. I'm not even going to get anything is possible. Now, <laughs> let's talk. Who's having fun so far? Let's blow up the chat box real quick. Who's getting some value? We've made it 75% through. Guys, 100,000 customers in the next 30 days. We're going to double the company in the next 29 days, 28 days, 29 days. We're going to double, 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 double the company. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Who's coming to boot camp tomorrow? Who's coming to boot camp Tomorrow, 2 p.m. Who's coming to boot camp tomorrow? We're not done yet. Don't jump off. I see people that don't, don't be jumping off. Don't play yourself. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Just doing a little plug right now. Ooh, ooh, my boy, Matt. This is his deal for sure, for sure. My boy, Matt's coming swinging tomorrow. Tomorrow, Matthew Rosa. 
levels of leadership. The levels of leadership. He kills this training. I've heard him do it. Uh oh. 2 p.m. tomorrow. Do not, do not, do not, do not play games with this one. All right, 2 p.m. tomorrow, we coming in. Now let's let's talk about my favorite, favorite, favorite piece of this whole training that we do today. The close. Guys, so many people over the years have told me, have asked me, have expressed to me their need to be better at closing. How do I become a better closer, Jay? Now, you know I'm gonna hit you with the sauce because that's what we gotta do. That's what Italians do. We gotta hit you with the sauce, right? So let me tell you, <coughs> closing is not what we do. In fact, <clears throat> we don't close anybody at all. This is shocking news. You don't close people. It's a wrong profession. See, in sales, you close. Now, there's some things from sales that work and help you build a network marketing business. For sure. There's some skills that overlap from sales and network marketing, but we're not salespeople. Some people are like, you're a salesman. Not a salesman. I don't sell people anything. I, I'm, I'm an affiliate and I share. I share what I believe in, but I don't sell. And I tell people, stop closing people and start opening relationships. Start opening people. See, when people join the business, that's when the journey really begins. Getting people to see the vision and pay $235, $325 to get started, that's not the hard part. The hard part is training them, retaining them, getting them dedicated, getting them motivated. That's the hard part. That's the skills. So if you're closing people, no wonder you're not making the money you want to make. No wonder you're not getting the results you want to get because you're closing people. You're, you're saying when you close people, that means you get their money and the deal is closed. That's car sales, guys. That's you know high ticket item sales. That's sales. See, when you sell something, see, if I want to sell Matt Rosa something, I show interest in Matt. I ask him questions. I, I get him enticed, right? And once he signs that check or sends that wire, the transaction is over. It's done. I get my commission. Matt gets his, re, his uh, service or good. We're done. What we do is the complete opposite. We don't close people. We open people. Because when they say yes, the relationship, the reason why, right? The, the, the goals, the dreams, the vision, that stuff is so important. And the relationship aspect of this business is what's going to help you elevate to a different level. Again, I'm going to say it. For like the 12th time, people follow people who have a genuine interest. People follow people who know where they're going. People follow people with the right intentions. So if people see the value in you, the value of you changing their life, right? The value that you could step in and elevate them from their current situation to a new situation, right? The current situation to a new place. That's not closing. Because we pay a month-to-month -month membership. We pay a month-to-month -month subscription. So if you close people, no wonder they quit after the first month. You closed them. You did exactly what you wanted to do. You got your $25. If you put them on the elite, you got your $50. And they quit because you closed them. You didn't open them. Guys, stop closing. Stop listening to trainings on closing. Stop listening to aggressive salespeople about how they close, like the Grant Cardones of the world, like the, the uh, Jordan Belforts of the world. Those trainings are helpful for a few reasons, and I'm not deedifying Grant or, or deedifying Jordan in any way. But if you're not getting the result that you're looking for, and that's who you're studying, that's exactly why. Because they're closers. Grant closes people on 50, 100, 250, $500,000 investments. He's got to be a shark. 
He smells blood and he goes for the kill. We do that here. We're burning people because people need a true opportunity. People need to plug into the education. You can't just come in here and get a return on investment promise to you. We don't do that. You can't just come here and get a guaranteed result. We don't do that. You come here and you learn. And the company's job is to provide the education for you to get a result. But the minute you start closing people is the minute your business is going to look like a theme park, you know, a bunch of ups followed by a bunch of downs, a bunch of ups followed by a bunch of downs, just up and down, up and down, up and down. And you'll never have consistent results. We, we open people, we open relationships, we build relationships. And I tell people, look, at the end of this training, here's the truth. If you don't like people, you'll know. Because if you're annoyed by this training and you think it's too much work to build relationships with people, then just trade. Just trade. It was a good try. We appreciate you. We love you all the same. 90% of the company is just trading. It's fine. But if you have a genuine interest in helping people, a genuine interest in people, and a genuine interest in freedom, then this is the perfect place for you to do it. Because Teaching people a skill set that can never be taken away from them is more powerful than putting a dollar in their hand. It's more powerful than putting any dollar amount in their hand because, like they say, if you give a man a fish, he can eat for today. But if you teach a man to fish, he can eat for a lifetime. So that's today's training. That's, that's, that's what we got for you today. Chairman Bootcamp Day 4 is officially a wrap. Tomorrow, 2 p.m. Guys, chat box is open. My Instagram is blowing up. I see like literally hundreds and hundreds of people tagging me. You guys are insane and I love you for it. Um, <laughs> holy crap. Uh, so I appreciate that. Um, I see the chat box going crazy. Um, 2 p.m. tomorrow, Matt Rosa, the levels of leadership, one of his best training topics, one of the best training topics for you to really understand how to get to where you want to be. But man, boot camp is on fire. Get on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, I'm going to end this meeting. Okay. We're going to get the recording up. I'm going to get this recording up today at some point. Um, and we'll see you guys at the top because that's right. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you.